Hi, I'm the avatar of Dr. Mark Ashton Smith, founder of IQ Mindware. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist, PhD trained in the Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition. For a number of years, I lectured and did research in the University of Cambridge. In this tutorial, I want to get you up to speed with the fundamentals of intelligence and IQ. This will help you understand why the G-code system works. It's all evidence-based and you can find all the scientific references below. IQ Mindware's G-code training is designed to increase general intelligence. So what is general intelligence? Here's one well-known definition from cognitive psychology. Our capacity to think, to solve novel problems, to reason and to have knowledge of the world. From a scientific point of view, general intelligence needs to be measured. And the science of measuring cognitive abilities is called psychometrics. While people have different cognitive strengths and weaknesses in language, math or music, correlations between measures of these abilities show us there's an underlying common component to all of them. This is called the G factor or G, short for general intelligence. Psychometric IQ tests like the Raven's matrices test or the WACE4 or Mensa IQ tests measure G in a standardised way, where the average is 100 and scores have a bell curve distribution in the general population as shown here. You can see the average is 100 and 68% of people score between 85 and 115. If you have an IQ of more than 115, you're in the top 16% of the population. If you have an IQ of more than 130, you're in the top 2% of the population, which is Mensa standard. Further analysis shows that G is made up of two underlying broad abilities called fluid and crystallised intelligence. These two can be thought of as your intelligence as information processing on the one hand and your intelligence as knowledge on the other. Fluid intelligence, or GF, is your ability to problem solve and reason and learn in unfamiliar situations, while crystallised intelligence, or GC, is your knowledge and skill sets. You invest your fluid intelligence in building up your crystallised intelligence. You can see from this data that people generally lose fluid intelligence as they get older but they keep improving crystallised intelligence. Here are three types of fluid intelligence abilities measured in IQ tests. The ability to make use of language and verbal knowledge to solve problems. The ability to reason with quantities and math to solve problems. And the ability to make use of mental imagery to solve problems. Here's an example from the well-known Raven's Matrices IQ test, where you have to figure out what comes next based on some underlying rules. You can see here that going from left to right in each row, the two on the left are added to make the one on the right. So the answer is number eight. There's a quick introduction to psychometric intelligence, the common factor underlying performance on tests for you. But it's known that there's much more to general intelligence than what's measured on IQ tests. Let's see why. A couple of decades ago, 52 researchers in the field of intelligence got together and agreed that intelligence is not merely book learning and narrow academic skill or test taking smarts. Rather, it reflects a broader and deeper capability for comprehending our surroundings, catching on, making sense of things or figuring out what to do. We need our intelligence not just for well-defined test problems, but open-ended problems in real life. For instance, how to navigate somewhere new, or how to negotiate a deal, or fix something mechanical, or solve a crime. IQ doesn't measure this kind of open-ended problem solving. An important feature of intelligent information processing, not measured by IQ tests, is that a lot of it happens unconsciously. For instance, while we're asleep, rather than through conscious reasoning. Have you experienced waking up in the morning when your understanding about something was clearer or you felt more confident about a decision to make? That's because of what's called implicit intelligence. Another aspect of intelligence that isn't measured by IQ tests is our strategic and decision-making ability. 
Intelligence isn't just about comprehension and learning, but also about being able to make smart decisions and obtain our goals through our actions. This goal-directed feature of intelligence is captured in definitions of intelligence from the AI community. Achieving complex goals in complex environments. And intelligence is the ability to use optimally limited resources, including time, to achieve goals. Another important feature of intelligence is how much work we put into reflecting on our learning or problem solving and decision making to make sure we're doing it rationally, correctly and objectively. In other words, our ability to be critical thinkers and avoid irrational cognitive biases. Another feature completely missed by psychometric testing is our ability to prioritise our cognitive efforts, to adapt, to grow and be successful. I prefer to refer to it as successful intelligence. And the reason is that the emphasis is on the use of your intelligence to achieve success in your life. So I define it as your skill in achieving whatever it is you want to attain in your life within your sociocultural context. Sternberg. Another aspect of intelligence that isn't measured by traditional IQ tests is the close link between intelligence and bioenergetics and metabolism. In other words, how we manage our energy and stress levels. The founder of Intelligence Scholarship, Charles Spearman, had this to say about intelligence way back in the 1920s. I regard G as measuring something analogous to an energy. That is to say, it is some force capable of being transferred from one mental operation to another different one. Even on the physiological side, there are some grounds for hoping that such energy will sooner or later be discovered in the nervous system, especially the cerebral cortex. Intelligence also plays an important role in the allostasis, good stress, bad stress axis, and what's called cognitive resilience. You're not smart if you can't deal with stress adaptively. The more intelligent you are, the less surprise and difficulty you experience over a broader range of situations and stresses, giving you more energy left over to process harder challenges. In other words, the more metabolic capacity you have to resist stress-related metabolic issues, such as burnout, and take on worthwhile challenges with adequate energy reserves. So to sum up this introduction to intelligence, I've defined what psychometric G means as measured by standardised IQ tests. I call this little g, but I've also outlined the other important features of general intelligence left out by traditional measures. I call this more comprehensive intelligence big G. The G code training system targets little g and will improve IQ test scores, but it's also designed to augment the fully leveraged G we've been looking at.